Hi everyone, welcome to a review of the iFi XDSD Griffon, which is a jack of all trades, master of quite a few, uh, portable DAC amp, which I really, really like. So I bought this with my own money because I wanted to use it after having listened to it a few times with IMs and headphones. So here it is. So this is iFi's, you know, I think best product. So I have reviewed the iFi Pro ICANN signature before, and if you look through my videos, you'll find it. And I've praised the iFi Pro ICANN signature and talked about how well it works with the BIS AB1266 Phi TC. I've talked about how the Suzvara is driven very well off it because iFi gives you this X base function, which I think really accentuates the base when you need it to. The Suzvara, for example, is an IM. The Suzvara is not an IM. I wish it was. The Suzvara is a headphone. This is not a Suzvara. This is the younger brother, Aria Organic, the latest rendition of the Aria, perhaps Hyphen's best value product. But any in any case, uh, the Suzvara does require a bit of bass lift, I think, Re regardless of what you pair it with or what you drive it with, at least given my preferences. So the iFi Pro ICANN signature does give you that, 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 you know, that configurability to give a bit of a bass boost to the Suzvara. Hence, I loved it. And the iFi Pro ICANN signature also has a thicker sound. And, and I'll explain why I'm talking about the bigger brother, the signature, in a minute. But the signature does also, because of its thicker sound, aid and just complement the, the thinness and metallicness of the Abyss headphones. And Abyss headphones sound more organic, which is something that I think was never gonna be possible. So the iFi Pro ICANN signature won me over. Um, this is interesting because this has a lot of the same sonic qualities, but in some ways I think it has a better tonality than the iFi Pro ICANN signature. Uh, but before we get into the discussion of the sound and I, I share my notes on the sound, uh, uh, of course, I want to talk about the specs because this is an incredibly spec'd out product. Burr Brown multi-bit true native DAC inside, 4.4 balanced and 3.5 single-ended. Uh, they claim that they deliver a watt into 32 ohms. And I wouldn't take this power output all that fastidiously because I, I think recently Golden Sound, a friend of mine, did this video where he talked about how iFi does overstate its output power ratings, which is a pity because these products are phenomenal on their own without needing any marketing hyperbole. Uh, in any case, um, this has an IE match, so I would have to take out this this sleeve from Mirror, which is a beautiful sleeve, uh, this cover rather, uh, to show you the, uh, the, the IE match, but you can, oh, this right here, it's, it's actually accessible from this, from here. So this is switched off. If I go all the way up, it adds the IE match function to the single-ended output. And if I go all the way down like this, it incorporates IE match into the balance output. So that's that. I, I have it switched on, off rather. The volume knob is pretty interesting and multifunction because a long press will switch it off like this. Um, a longer press is required perhaps. And there you go. Uh, uh, a short press will mute it and then of course, you will get an LED indicator that will indicate the volume of this, right? So that's pretty handy, I think. Uh, it's currently muted, and you can see the X base is switched on. So this is this is a very handy OLED screen going on here. Um, X base and X base. X base adds a few dB to the base shelf, and it does really help with headphones like the Sennheiser HD650. It does help with IMs as well, and X base I think also helps with certain certain uh, IMs. And you can have both switched on or off, right? Because that does, I think, uh, 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 you know, really come in handy, especially with headphones like the Sennheiser that I just showed you guys. If you have both the X-Base and X-Base switched on, what tends to happen is this headphone, which is very narrow sounding to start with, with the X-Base switched on, can sound a little narrower because that increased bass shelf can give you the perception the soundstage width has gone down. And then when you enhance the soundstage width by switching on the X-Base, it just starts to sound more normal again. So I really like these features, not to say that I use them all the time with most of my stuff. I really enjoyed the LED indicator on the volume now. knob. As you can see, it's just changed color from green to cyan, I think. And then if I, then to purple. So I love all this LED. The input has an LED depending on how you're inputting, whether you're using coax or SPDIF right here, or whether you're using USB right here. This feature is interesting because this feature allows you to dial in the upper mids or presence region because once you enhance the base shelf, sometimes upper mids or the clarity will suffer. 
So you can adjust it for that. And I have it adjusted for the presence region. They call it the presence region, but, but, but what they mean is upper mids region. Okay, so it's got a plethora of features, line outs, line ins, of course. Uh, uh, and, and I talked about the balanced in, balanced out. It has Bluetooth, although the Bluetooth is just about decent. I've had a better experience with Bluetooth with competitors and sl slightly lower price competitors like the Channeling H5. The Channeling H5 Bluetooth is just very, very impressive because it sounds almost as good as the H5 plugged in or wired. In this case, with Bluetooth, you do get a loss of fidelity and it doesn't sound as good. Now to talk about sound. Okay, so what does this sound like? So first and foremost, it does have the iFi house sound, right? It's still warm, but it's not gooey warm and it's not overly smooth like the hip jack. And it's not uh, thick like the Pro ICANN Signature. So for that, I give it massive, massive kudos because it's just warmth done right. Uh, one of my friends thought this treble was a bit spicy. I didn't think that was the case at all. I just thought there was enough lower treble information to keep things interesting and sort of balance out the warmth, which was important because I still got good separation. I got good lead, leading edge of notes. So the attack of, let's say, drumsticks or the attack of an electric guitar or even of the acoustic guitar strings was very, very evident and crystalline, which I liked because sometimes with warm sounding uh, devices, especially like the Channeling H5, some of the attack can be compromised, which was not the case with this one. I really enjoyed how it does treble. Upper mids are actually fine. They're not too forward or too recessed. And the bass, like I talked about, is snappy and textured. Um, now, on the stock form, the bass, I think, is just neutral. It doesn't sound as bassy as a lot of iFi products can. But then, of course, you use the X bass, and I've just switched it on, and you immediately gaze, uh, get a little more impact, and, and you also perceive a little more texture, a little more decay. Overall, I would say the mid-range is a standout. It has a bit of lushness, which I really enjoy. And I think it has top tier transparency and resolution for the price point and for the fact that it's a portable device. I really, really enjoyed it with IEMs, guys. Now, there's almost nothing to complain about here. I like, like, like the X-Space feature. I like the X-Space feature. The only thing that I would say is that when it came to driving certain planars, like the Hyphen Aria, the Aria sounded great, especially if you had the X-Base switched on. And, and But for some reason, the Aria was not as powerful in a stage presentation. Of course, it has to do with current delivery, but it wasn't as powerful in the way Aria, the Aria Organic can deliver stage information in its height, especially. Uh, the, the vertical height of the Aria in terms of its sonic presentation is just massive. It sounds very speaker-like. And that is the case, I think, no matter what you drive it with, that also comes through on my Sony W1 ZM2 DAP. On this product, however, it, this vertical stage information didn't come through as well. So I wouldn't drive a lot of planars with this. On the other hand, I did try it with a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of dynamic drivers. And this was not the only one. So the Sennheiser HD650 was just one of the dynamic drivers I tried it with. I've also tried this with the Atrium from ZMF. And I would say that regardless of what dynamic driver I tried this with, this delivered. This was punchy especially with the X-Base 2 switched on. This provided a lot of and preserved a lot of the micro nuances and micro detail information. The stage width was preserved and enhanced even with the X-Base X -Base feature. Uh, 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 the timbre was organic. The atrium sounded so punchy and lifelike on this that it was just incredible. For And I would highly recommend this, guys, for any dynamic driver headphone, even the high impedance ones. Last but not the least, if you're driving IMs, I mean, this is just magical with IM. Even like a very low priced IM like the Moondrop Arias really came alive on this. The Arias, I think, I loved on this. I also have driven more expensive stuff like the Earl Mario Jewels on this. And I just want to talk about Arias because it really scaled on this. The Arias can have a bit of a metallic treble in around the lower treble, and that was somewhat not as offensive, I think, on this. The notes just sounded a better separated. The imaging improved. Bass response improved. It just scaled. And I was pretty damn impressed with how these two synergized. So in terms of synergy, a lot of different IMs have synergized well on this. I would really recommend this, guys. If you are looking for a portable product for IMs, there's a lot of new stuff on the market from Ibasso and a bunch of others that I'm yet to try. But this, given its form factor, I just feel like more IM owners should use this. It sounds magnificent. It's a bit of an old product, 
It's been around for a long time, so it might get missed. But I hope it doesn't because IFA has produced a winner here and I strongly recommend it for IEMs and dynamic driver headphones. That's it for me, guys. I hope this review was useful. If it was, give my video a like, please, and follow my channel if you have not because it does help with the YouTube algorithm and motivates me to keep going with these contents. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Bye-bye.